Welcome to a lesson on constructing a graph from data. The table below shows the total distance, including the reaction time and deceleration time, it takes a car traveling at various speeds to come to a complete stop. So in the first row we have the speed in miles per hour. In the second row we have the stopping distance in feet. Before we set up our graph though, let's look at some criteria for a good graph. Number one, the horizontal axis should be properly labeled with the name and units of the input variable. Two, the vertical axis should be properly labeled with the name and units of the output variable. Step three, we want to use an appropriate scale. We want to start at or just below the lowest value and end at or just above the highest value on each axis. We want to scale the graph or the axes so the adjacent tick marks are equal distance apart. We want to use numbers that make sense for the given data set. And the axes meet at the point zero comma zero or the origin. We want to use two forward slash marks but between the origin and the first tick mark if the scale does not begin at zero indicating there's a break in the number line. Four, all points should be plotted correctly and the graph should make use of the available space. So going back to our example, let's first identify the input and output variables. The input is the speed in miles per hour. We'll just put MPH for miles per hour. We must also label this along the horizontal axis. Let's go ahead and do that. This is speed in miles per hour. The output variable is the stopping distance in feet, which we must also label along the vertical axis. Now we'll identify the lowest and highest value of the inputs and outputs in order to help scale the horizontal and vertical axes. It's also helpful to recognize that the provided grid is a 20 by 20 grid. Now looking at the speed or the inputs, notice how the lowest value or smallest value is 15 and the highest value or largest value is 80. Looking at the outputs or the stopping distance, notice how the lowest value or smallest value is 44 and the largest value or highest value is 481, which means the horizontal axis must at least go from 15 to 80 and the vertical axis must go from at least 44 to 481. But we actually want to use more convenient values that'll make it easier to form subintervals along the horizontal and vertical axes. For example, for the inputs, instead of going from 15 to 80, let's go from zero to 100. So we'll have zero over here on the far left and 100 over here on the far right. Now we need to determine how we want to scale this axis and how many tick marks we want from zero to 100. Let's say we wanted to have 10 subintervals from 0 to 100 because 100 divided by 10 equals 10. Each subinterval would have a width of 10 units. So we'll divide from 0 to 100 into 10 equal partitions using tick marks. And because we have a 20 by 20 grid, we'll put a tick mark at every other grid mark, meaning here, 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 and so on. Remember from our criteria, we do need these intervals to all have the same width. Because each subinterval represents 10 units, we can now count by tens all the way to 100. So we'd have 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. Now we'll scale the vertical axis. Instead of going from 44 to 481, let's go from zero to 500. So zero would be down here at the origin and 500 would be here at the top. If you want 10 subintervals, because 50 divided by 10 is equal to 50, each subinterval would have a width of 50 units. And again, because you know this is a 20 by 20 grid, we'll mark off 10 subintervals from 0 to 500 using every other grid mark. This way all the subintervals will have the same width, which we do need. And now we can count by 50s up to 500. So we have 50, 100, 150, 200, and so on. Now we need to plot all the points given in the table. We're going to form the ordered pairs vertically using the columns. So the first ordered pair is 15 comma 45. Next we'd have 25 comma 85, 35 comma 135, 45 comma 196, and so on. 
So the first ordered pair is 15 comma 45. So from the origin we move right to 15 and then up to 44 which would be approximately here. Next we have 25 comma 85, so right to 25, up to 85, which is approximately here. We can't be extremely precise, we just do the best we can when applying these points based upon the scaling of the axes. Next we have 35 comma 135, so here's the input of 35, output of 135 would be approximately here. Next we have 45 comma 196, so right to 45, up to 196 approximately here. Next ordered pair would be 50 comma 229. Input of 50, output of 229 is going to be below 250, maybe here. Next we have 60 comma 304. Input of 60 is here. Output of 304 would be approximately here. Next ordered pair would be 75 comma 433, so here's the input of 75, up to 433, which is below 450. And the last ordered pair is 80, comma, 481. So input of 80, output of 481, which would be approximately here. So here's an accurate graph of the given data. I hope you found this helpful.